Hey everybody, I'm Colin Cole, and I want to welcome you all to another episode of Pro Football Report on ADSN TV. At today, I want to welcome to the show the legendary Kevin Donnelly, and we're going to be talking a little bit about Super Bowl week. Uh, that's that's, that's the, what we're dealing with right now. We got Super Bowl week in full effect, and uh, you know, I want to talk to you guys about that. But first, before we do that, we're going to jump to this clip from offensive tackle from the Kansas City Chiefs, Mike Remmers. I'll tell you what, it's the longest, shortest game of your life. It's it's uh, it's very strange. Uh, yeah, it is a long game, but, uh, you know, it's over before you know it. It goes by pretty quick, to be honest. Um, but, yeah, I, it'll definitely help my last year. Or that experience will definitely help me because um, it's something that, you know, we have two weeks to prepare for this game. And, you know, you don't want to peak early in the week. Um, you know, you want to kind of have a slow, steady build up to the game. Um, but, yeah, I, I just can't wait to play the game right now. But I – Need to kind of calm down, you know, just wait. We got we got some more time. Um, so yeah, I'm just trying to rely on that. And then plus these guys, uh, obviously being you know winning the Super Bowl last year, they obviously have a lot of Super Bowl experience them, themselves. So um, I think that everyone will uh, go off of that, off of those previous experiences for this year. All right, Kevin. So that was Mike Remmers. Like you talked about a little bit, uh, it's a it's a fast week. It's a it's a quick build up, and then you know you jump right into the game. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience with the uh, Super Bowl week and what you remember most, man? Yeah, it was uh, 2003 2004 season, playing with the Panthers and Super Bowl 38. We were uh, going to play the um, New England Patriots in Houston, and uh, it's. It's a lot like what Mike Remmer said, you know, the first week you're dealing with some stuff at home uh, in terms of logistics of getting people to game, getting tickets, things like that, which will be interesting this year with COVID-19, you know, how many guests that they're able to have and if they even need to try to secure hotel rooms or anything for family, because who knows any who would really want to travel to it um, or it could be very limited in what's available. But um it felt like those first few days, it was all about the logistics of it. It wasn't until about midweek that you were able to start concentrating on the game. And I think it was good having a few days at home before traveling to the Super Bowl to get some work in because when that next week hits, uh, and I know the Chiefs are practicing and doing stuff from home, but it's got to be the same experience for them. Once that second week hits, um, it feels like it's flying by. And before you know it, uh, the game's on top of you. And, and you know, it's, I think for every player going into that game, you want to feel like you did everything in your power to prepare um, for the assignment that you have, for what you have to do, the plays are going to be called, what you could face on the offense or defensive side, and just feel like you left no stone unturned so that, you know, there was no regrets. And, uh, you know, we lost that game to the, to um, the eventual champions, New England Patriots on a last second field goal, but I think to a man, a lot of the guys walking off the field, it was like hey, we went toe to toe with New England, uh, one of the best franchises over the last 20 years. Tom Brady's won six championships. I mean, it's disappointing as heck to lose that game. But, you know, the preparation we put in and how we we gave them everything we could and actually had that game tied with just like about a minute left and unfortunately gave Tom Brady too much time. Uh, but it's over just like that. I mean, just like what Mike said, I know he experienced the Super Bowl in 2015 with the Panthers. And um, so he knows what he's talking about. He's been there, done that. Yep, yep. You know, it's amazing when you look at it. The, the interesting thing about it is you have all this buildup throughout a season. And you build up all this time, all this energy, go, all this effort go, goes towards this, this one common goal of getting to this game. And then it goes by, like you said, so quickly in a week. What is it like in that week, you know, going through – the media, the media experience to trying to find some sorts of normalcy in, in the practice week. What does that whole week build up to that game like for, for, for guys like yourself? Well, I think it's, you know, Colin, you know, for playing as long as you did, it's it really is about routine and keeping a good routine, no matter if it's, you know, the third preseason game and you're going to play a lot more reps than usually in the first or second preseason game all the way to the Super Bowl. Um, you want to have a, a routine that guys can fall back on and lean on through this. Uh, and I think that, um, you know, for these two teams, it, it's going to be more routine than ever in some ways because the Chiefs are staying home up until I think the day before, two days before, before heading to Tampa Bay. So they'll be at their own facility, uh, their normal practice schedule. They're not bussing around. They're not having to, to go to different things. They're handling a lot of their media responsibilities through zoom or different other uh, venues where it's not in person 
Uh, and then for Tampa Bay hosting the first Super Bowl as a as the uh, representative of the NFC in their home stadium, um, they're getting to experience a lot of that routine. So I think that although it's a COVID-19 year and things are being adjusted, you got to be flexible and on the fly. These two teams got to do uh, a normal routine or will get to do this routine through this week heading into the game. And it's, um, you know, I think Mike Remmers in that piece really said it perfect because you don't want to peak too early um, and you want that slow build to when you feel like emotionally you're ready to give it your all as well as physically and mentally. And I think it's the emotional part that um, that's where the coaches come in and really have to keep the teams on a really even keel and, and a slow build up towards the game because, you know, some guys might have a big matchup. Mike Remmers will have a huge matchup against JPP in that defensive line for the Bucks. It'd be easy for him to just go all out and, and spend more than enough time video and, and going hard in practice and doing all these extra things that, you know, you're almost exhausted by the end of it and, and you're not peaking at the right time. So I think it's important for players like him as it's weak builds. And as you go through it, um, you're ready for the game. And really when, when we say normal week practice, I mean, for me in 2003, and I'm sure that for most teams, they, they don't change a thing. You know, our, our regular Wednesday practice was to install, um, you know, first and 10 second and normal offense in terms of our passing game and running game. Um, we did a lot of that the week prior because you get the two weeks between the Super Bowl and the championship games. But even into that second week, if Wednesday was our, our, our that was our planned install, we did it again on Wednesday and just went over that same routine. And then Thursday was a lot of third and long situation, blitz packages, things like that. Friday was red zone. Um, we just went through that same exact thing. And, um, you know, it kept us loose. Coach Fox was a really tough coach. Um, he could be a grinder, but keeping that schedule, um, it made you feel in a comfort zone. And we had a lot of fun during that week also. And I think that's the key to, to really enjoying that experience. And that's one thing Colony did say. Um, he stressed the importance of the game, obviously. Everyone dreams to be there and you want to be there and you want to win it, but drink it in every step of the way. Um, you know, it doesn't matter if it's some time with family and enjoying it or it's dinner with your buddies or it's, um, you know, going to the walkthrough on Friday and keeping it loose. Um, enjoy every step of it because you never know when you're getting back, if at all. I agree. I mean, it's interesting, you know, saying that you have to enjoy every aspect of it. There was no question. And the, the biggest thing for these for these Kansas City Chiefs is they were just there last year. So there's a lot of familiarity with that. That being said, they're going to be playing without starting left tackle in Eric Winston. So uh, Mike Remmers being at the other starting, we were talking about um, um, uh, Martinez Rankin stepping in for, for, for Eric Winston. How big of a play, how big does that uh, that injury play into this game? And what is that going to do for Patrick Mahomes and his offense? Well, I think it's I think it's a great equalizer. You know, I think a lot of people think that, you know, obviously the betting line favors the Chiefs. A lot of fans favor the Chiefs. They think the Chiefs are going to win. But, you know, what, what happens up front? And, Colin, I know being a former defensive lineman in the NFL for a long time, you appreciate uh, what goes on in the trenches. And that's really where the game can be won and lost, um, and most times is. And I think for them losing their two starting tackles um, during the course of the season with Schwartz being out and then uh, Fisher uh, and having those guys that they're coming in back up to replace those guys, they're going against one of, the, I think, especially in the last few games of the season, a defense that peaked at the right time is one of the best in the Bucks. And I think that their front seven or front six, however you want to determine whether they got nickel in the game or not. When you're talking about Sue and uh, Jason Pierre-Paul, and Shaq Barrett, who's come on strong here at the end, uh, and Levante David, Devin White. I mean, those are playmakers. They're getting sacks. They're making tackles for losses. Um, they're getting and and you know they gave Aaron Rodgers a fit in that game. It was one of the big difference makers to them winning that uh, NFC Championship game. And I think, you know, the one thing it feels almost like Mahomes is unstoppable. But if you get instant pressure, Colin, you know this instant pressure, there's not a lot of solutions. Um, you, you have things built in for the blitz. You have things built in if, you know, you got short time and you got quick throws that you can get out of your hands. But man, you know, if, if they bring a blitz and they got one-on-one -on -one and they got a guy, you know, 
you know, Mike Remmers going against Jack Barrett or JPP. Those are experienced guys that know how to get after the quarterback, and they can be there right away. I mean, instantly. Uh, and Mike Remmers could tell you that. Um, you know, at Super Bowl 50, uh, Von Miller was on Cam Newton almost instantly, and you, you took a quarterback that was one of the most mobile, elusive, strong guys. Um, you get to him instantly like that. Bad things happen, and obviously it was a touchdown uh, for – uh, the Denver Broncos that day and was really kind of set the tone for the day. So I think up front, these two tackles, are, I mean, their best friend is going to be a wide variety of play action, being able to establish a run game. And if, if they can't do that, I think there's going to be a lot of pressure on Mahomes more than he's faced in a long time. And I, I'm looking forward to kind of seeing that battle. You know, you look about the battles within the battles. To me, it's that front uh, seven going against the offensive line for the Kansas City Chiefs and how Mahomes handles any pressure that comes his way. I agree with you 100. percent You know, I think we both see the, the lens from a similar uh, angle, especially being former linemen ourselves. And yeah, it's very interesting considering those guys just playing against who could be the the, the MVP of this season in uh, Aaron Rodgers and what were the, what they were able to do with that offense that was so prolific during that season. The loss of Bakhtiari in that mm-hmm. offense really proved to be a huge, huge, um, huge piece because they tried to replace him, obviously, by sliding the other offensive tackle over to that side, but it, it just wasn't the same. So having a similar situation going into this week or going into this game is going to be very interesting. It was kind of uh, – it's going to be interesting to see how they are able to, to, to do it. Just like you said, play action, but they're also going to probably have to find ways to help those guys out in certain situations. Moving right along, man, it's, it's – and kind of probably wrap this up after this. I got uh, one last thing for you. I talked a little bit about that Super Bowl experience back in 03, man. And it's it's thinking back on um, what, in your opinion, was the most unforgettable moment of that entire experience? And, you know, there was some questionable things also. Uh, in your opinion, was, did you feel like the refs played a factor into that game? Um, you know, it was – I think some of the moments that, that stood out to me was that, um, man, the realization about what's about to take place when you saw that first kickoff and all the flash bulbs, people's cameras going off. It's like 70,000 of them at the same time. And you're like, it is game on. This culmination of the NFL season, all 256 regular season games, playoff games, it all comes down to this. Like in that moment, it was it was joy, anxiety, fear, um, relief, um, and just ready to get it on. It was just all mixed into one package. And then um, it's like so many people say, it's it, it feels just like a regular game once you make that first contact. And I tell you, some of the first plays we ran were some running plays because we wanted to establish the run. And Deshaun Foster and Stephen Davis had been lightning and thunder for us all season long with their running attack. Uh, we couldn't get much going. I remember trying to to move Ted Washington, one of the biggest D linemen ever to walk into the NFL, had to have been 400 plus. Um, it, w- it was like trying to move a, a building. You know, it, just, it didn't give whatsoever. You know, you hit it, you, you push it, you pound on it. It's just, it's just the foundation was there. It wasn't given up. Um, and, you know, it was kind of interesting how the game progressed. It was very, you know, slow going offensively in the first half. Um, so that leads us to another memory. Halftime is so long because of the halftime entertainment. It, You know it's going to be long, and Coach Fox pre- prepared us it's going to be long, but it's like you almost go in and basically said, hey, you guys lay down. If you need to shut your eyes and take a nap, do it. We have so much time that we're going to have ample time to warm you back up and get you full speed again for the second half. Um, another memory is, is kind of – ditching some of our game plan because we weren't running the ball well and saying, all right, it's in your hands, Jake DeLome. Go toe-to-toe with one of the greatest ever to play the quarterback position. Let's see what happens. And this guy went toe-to-toe with Tom Brady in the second half and nearly got us a win. Uh, And then ultimately, I think um, losing the game, uh, it's just crushing. And to see all the confetti and the colors of the Patriots come raining down as you're walking off the field, it's it's tough to swallow, uh, especially for me because – I was at the end of my career and it was going to be the last time that I had a chance to go to a Super Bowl. But I think one of the saving graces for me, one of the things that that makes me most proud is that, you know, we were underdogs 
every single game that we played were the underdog. We weren't favored in any one of those um, playoff games or the Super Bowl. And, uh, you know, we won the playoff games, obviously, and then got to the Super Bowl and took them all the way to the end uh, and gave them everything that they could handle. So um, I think everyone walked off the field knowing that they'd given their best. It just wasn't enough that particular day. Um, but, you know, in terms of the calls, I, 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 it feels like the, with the refs calls, those things always tend to balance themselves out. You hate it when they're at key times that, that come into effect. Um, I was just thinking about the playoffs this year and, they're almost letting guys play a little bit more. But then at the end of that Tampa Bay Packers game, there was a key call that just came up. And I know as a defensive player, you're thinking, man, we got him off the field. We got him off the field. And then suddenly the, the, you see the flag there for holding or pass interference and it gives them all new life. Um, it can be absolutely disheartening. So, you know, you just hope, I think at the end of the day, now that I'm a fan, I don't have a vested interest in either one of these teams. I want a close game. I want to see what Brady Mahomes matchup looks like. I want to see the defensive line uh, and how uh, the offensive lines for both groups work against those guys. And can they get the running game going? Who has a big turnover? Who's going to be the MVP? You know, it's typically a quarterback, but, you know, who knows? And last thing I'll say, Colin, I'm looking forward to the halftime entertainment. I think the weekend is a great performer, uh, has had a, a great career with phenomenal songs. I think it appeals to a wide range of people. And it's what's uh, real interesting is he's investing uh, over $7 million of his own money into the halftime show to who knows what's, what he's doing exactly. I don't know if that's been said, if it's more technology or bringing in other uh, cameos or uh, visually things on the field, whatever it's going to be. It's just it, when you got an entertainer as, as good as he is investing in this halftime performance as much as he has, you know it's got to be good. Absolutely. You got to think so. It, I mean, I don't know if any, any performers have invested quite that much, but uh, with that kind of a budget, I'm assuming we're going to see some some great uh, fireworks. We're going to see quite a bit of a light show. So I'm excited for it as well. And with that, uh, Kevin, I want to thank you again for, for coming on and sharing some of your experience with me on Pro Football Report. And it's been great. Enjoy the game coming up. I'm Colin Cole. You guys take care.